In this video, we're going to go ahead and create an authentication class that's going to allow us to use our database to authenticate for with our website. So that means we're going to be creating our auth class, which is just going to be a static class. Again, we're not going to be doing anything fancy with inversion of control or anything like that because, well, that's not really the purpose of why we're here. We're here to build a game. So we're going to just write a very simple auth class that's going to allow us to authenticate using forms authentication. Now forms authentication is an authentication mode within ASP.NET that allows us or that gives us a bunch of functionality. We're only going to be using a small subset of that functionality in order to generate and authenticate with the form token or the, the cookie that's generated with forms authentication. Now the form cookie is a very secure way to encode um, a username, whether or not a person's authenticated, as well as additional user data into a cookie that's set on the user's browser, which allows us to know if a person has logged in in the past or not. Again, it is secure, it's encrypted, and it's also, um, it, it, I can't remember the term for it. It's also stored in such a way that it can uh, detect if a person has tried to forge that cookie. So a person saying that they're one person when they really aren't. So we're going to go ahead and set that up. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to enable forms authentication by going into our web.config and finding our system.web, which is right here. That's our system.web. And we're going to be adding in our authentication. Now the authentication element is going to have an attribute called mode, and the mode is going to be set to forms. Then we're going to have to configure our forms authentication, so we do that by adding the forms element, and really the only thing that we want to add in here is going to be the login URL. And then it's going to be set to um, uh, squiggly slash login. So what's going on here? Well, there's a variety of different things that we can do to configure our forms authentication. Um, most of these, though, however, are not yeah, their their defaults are perfectly fine. Uh, we might be setting require SSL to true later down the road, but we don't need that at the moment. Um, we definitely don't want cookie list. We don't need to set our domain. We really don't need to set any of these items, but we do need to set the login URL. The reason is, is if for some reason a person tries to access a controller that's marked as requiring authentication, we need to know where to redirect them to to log in. Now fortunately, we can just provide the login URL right here, and the login URL is going to be simply a virtual path, which in this case um, is specified by the, uh, the tilde, which specifies the root of our web application. So this will turn into a URL such, such as http colon slash slash uh, domain dot com slash login because we put that tilde in there. So now that we have forms authentication enabled, let's go ahead and write an auth service that allows us to work against it. So I'm going to come up here and create a new class called auth. And I'm simply going to create it at the root of the project. Again, we're not doing anything fancy with IOC. I'm going to enforce that this class be static, so I'm going to provide the static modifier. And then I'm going to write some code. Uh, the first thing we want is public static user user with a get method on it. And um, let's go ahead and also write a public, well, actually, we can just use a setter. So we'll have a get and a set method, which will be empty for right now. Oh, come on, Visual Studio. It's not letting me uh, format these the way I want to because, oh, there we go. OK, so we have our public static user get and set. Uh, this will be used for logging in or logging, uh, or well, logging in or retrieving the currently logged in user. We're also going to have a public static void logout method, which will log out of our user or log our user out. So the responsibility of this class is to interact with forms authentication. So essentially what it's going to do is it's going to check to see if there is a user that is currently stored in the cache of our HTTP context, if there is, return it. Otherwise, we're going to check to see um, what the current identity of the HTTP context is, 
And if it is set to something, we're going to extract some data from it, use that data to load a user entity from our database, and then cache that value for later use. So that way we're not hitting the database every time we access this user property. Before we do that, we do need a private const string, and I'm going to call it user key, and simply going to be buzzmmo.web.op.userkey. The context, contents of this key is irrelevant other than it be unique. And so the best way to generate a key that's unique is to simply use the fully qualified um, class name as well as the uh, property name. And this key is going to be used to cache our user object. Let's write our um, let's write our set method first. So let's see how we go about setting a user. So when we log in, we simply say auth.user equals whatever user we extracted from the database. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an auth cookie using forms authentication. Then we're going to modify the auth cookie to insert the user ID into the ticket. Then we're going to effectively return that cookie to the browser. So the way we do this is first we generate the auth cookie. So I'm going to say var auth cookie equals forms authentication dot get auth cookie passing in the username and a boolean indicate, indicating if we're creating a persistent cookie. So the username is going to be value dot username and pers create persistent cookie is going to be true. That's effectively the remember me button that you see on websites. We're just going to assume that's true for, for now. OK, so now that we've created the auth cookie, remember, we're in a property setter. So the value is whatever we passed in or assigned this property to. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create it the, or we're going to extract the ticket from the cookie. So we're going to say old ticket equals forms authentication dot decrypt passing an auth cookie dot value. So we're extracting the ticket from the auth cookie. The reason we're doing this is because I want to rewrite the ticket to include additional information about the user before it gets sent to their browser. So what we're going to do is we're going to say new ticket equals new forms authentication ticket and then we're going to pass in a bunch of stuff. So we're going to pass in a bunch of stuff from the old ticket. We're going to pass in the version. We're going to pass in the name. We're going to pass in the um, issue date. And I'm going to go ahead and full screen so we can see the rest of this. We're going to pass in the expiration. We're going to pass in the is persistent. And then we're going to pass in our user data. Now what's our user data? It's going to be value.id.toString. OK, so what this code right here does is we are recreating a, um, a ticket. We're recreating a forms authentication ticket by setting all the values to the old ticket in addition to encoding the ID of the user into the user data. Now, the user data it allows us to add, just tack on whatever additional information we want. Well, we want to add the ID of the user to that because we're going to use that later to retrieve the user from the database. Now that we have our new ticket, let's go ahead and reset our auth cookie. So we're going to say auth cookie dot value equals forms authentication dot encrypt new ticket. So we're taking the auth cookie that was initially returned by get auth cookie and we're replacing its contents with the result of encrypting this new ticket that has our additional data tacked onto it. Now that we've set its value, uh, we can go ahead and say HTTP context, which will require us to pull in um, using system.web at the top, dot current dot response dot cookies dot add auth cookie. And that's all we need to do. So effectively, what we've done is we have now signed the user into forms authentication, which will do a bunch of things behind the scenes. So this code will only be invoked on our login screen. So our login screen will invoke this code. It'll create the, the cookie, and it'll send it back to the browser. 
Let's go ahead and implement the logout method really quickly, simply because it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the logout method. The logout method is just going to say forms authentication taught sign out, which is going to remove that cookie from the user's browser. OK, so now we have to write some additional code that's going to be slightly more scary looking. Again, this is going to follow what I said before. First, we're going to see if the user has already been established and cached into our HTTP context. If it has, return it. If it hasn't, we're going to want to check to see, or we're going to want to extract the user data from our forms authentication ticket and use that as an ID to load our user. OK, so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to say if not HTTP context dot current dot is, or sorry, dot current dot identity. Oh, come on, give me identity identity dot user dot identity dot is authenticated then return null that means a user is not logged in whatsoever the HTTP context current user identity will be set to something that is authenticated by forms authentication if ASP.NET detects that they have an auth cookie on their browser then we're going to say var user equals HTTP context dot current dot items user key as user. If user equals null, then do stuff. Otherwise, return user. Or return true. Return user. So what is this? HTTP context.current.items. Uh, this is a dictionary that allows us to cache items per request. So even if multiple requests are being fired at the same time, as they will be in a multi-threaded environment, each request will get its own instance of items and it'll allow us to cache those items so that we can share it between different parts of our code of the request. So it's a very useful place to put cached objects while we want to work with them so that, for example, requesting the user multiple times doesn't hit the database multiple times. OK, so now what do we have to do? Well, the next thing is we have to extract the user data out of our forms authentication ticket. So to do that, I'm going to say, var identity or forms identity equals http context dot current dot user dot identity as forms identity if forms identity is null return null so what this is doing is this is extracting our uh, forms identity which is a special uh, class that the forms authentication sets the identity property too. Also note this is this data is also available from thread.current.identity. Okay, so now that we've uh, finally established that we are authenticated and we are authenticated by uh, forms authentication, we now need to extract our user data. So I'm going to say int user ID. I'm going to say if not int dot try parse forms identity dot ticket dot user data out user ID return null. So what we're doing is we're extracting the user data out of the forms identity ticket and we're trying to parse it into an integer. If that fails, that means that the user um, the user data of the ticket was set to something invalid and we want to return null. If we get to line 29, that means we've extracted the user ID out of our forms identity ticket which means we can now query the database to find that user. So to do that, we're going to open a connection to our database by saying var uh, using var database equals new MMO database context. Note that uh, this brought in this using statement up here using buzzmmo.data. And then we're going to say um, something like user equals database dot users dot uh, find uh, let, let's see. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm new to, well, not new to Entity Framework, but I'm so used to and Hibernate. Let me make sure that the behavior of this is correct. Uh, the find method will return an entity with a given primary key value, just like I thought it would. 
If an entity with the given primary key value exists in the context and is returned immediately, good. Otherwise, a request is made. If found, is attached. If no entry is found, then null is returned. That's what the bit I was looking for. So if, so we're going to say user ID. So users, user equals database.users.find user ID. If there is no user in the database with this ID, it'll return null, which is the behavior that I want. I want this user property to return null if there is no user um, for whatever reason. Either you're not authenticated, or you're authenticated incorrectly, or your user was deleted for some reason uh, after you generated the ticket, then we want to go ahead and return null. Otherwise, we want to return the user. Now, the last thing we want to do in this if statement is we want to set the HTTP context um, items of user key to our user that we retrieved from the database so that we don't have to rerun this code multiple times. So I say HTTP context dot current dot user, or what am I doing? Current dot items user key equals user. And that's it. That is our auth class. So let's go ahead and uh, test it out. Let's write some uh, let's write some auth code in our uh, on our front end to allow a user to log in and log out. So over here in controllers. I'm going to come into home controller. I'm first going to go into the view of home controller, and I'm going to write some code in the view telling the user if he's logged in or logged out. So I'm going to open up views, home index, and then I'm going to say if model, or sorry, if HTTP context dot current, or I think I can actually access, uh, it's not going to let me access identity straight up, is it? So we're say if HTTP context current identity or user dot identity or maybe we can just access user. Yeah, if user identity is authenticated, and say welcome user identity name. Otherwise, say you are not logged in. Let's hit Control F5, which will go ahead and launch our application for us. And of course, it brought us to an invalid path. Let's nuke that path and go to the root. And we should see a screen there's something that says, you are not logged in, which is exactly what we want to see, because we are indeed not logged in. So let's go ahead and create an auth controller that allows us to log in and log out. I'm going to come up here to controllers, and I'm going to say, add a new class. And the class name is going to be auth controller. The auth controller is going to inherit from controller. We're going to have a public AR, which for action result, login. And then we're going to have another public AR login, um, auth login form marked with HTTP post. OK. And then we're also going to say return view new auth login. Auth login is going to be the view model that we'll be using for logging in to our account. So let's go ahead and create that view model as it doesn't exist quite yet. Under the view model's namespace, I'm going to add a new class called auth login. Now, what do we need to log in? We need a username and a password. So I'm going to say public string username. I'm going to set it as required. I'm also going to set a max length of 128. Remember, that corresponds to the max length I have in the database. Then I'm going to say public string password. For password, I'm going to set as required. I'm going to set the max length to 100, or actually, no. The max length of the password is irrelevant. The max length that I set in the, um, uh, in the database is the max length of the resulting hash, not the max length of the plain text password. So I don't need to worry about that. Uh, what I do need to worry about, however, is setting the data type to data type dot password. So now that we have our auth login view model, we can jump back into our auth controller and bring it in. We can go ahead and finish out this method in its or this controller in its entirety before we actually work on the view. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say um, if not model state is valid, return view form. 
which says if there was a validation error, like they didn't type in a username or they didn't type in a password, just return the view using the data that they did pass in. So if it's valid, if it's not valid, return form. Next up, we're going to have to load up our database and we're going to have to try to find a user that matches the username. Then we're going to have to check the password. So for now, I'm going to be instantiating my database context at a per controller basis or per action basis. Uh, we can look at or work on later, maybe abstracting that away a little bit so we don't have to do that. But for now, I'm just going to do the most simplest thing possible, which is saying using var database equals new MMO database context. And say var user equals database dot users dot single or default. Now, single or default by doing this will bring in a using statement for using system.link. Of course, Entity Framework supports link, so it'll turn this query into a SQL query as opposed to executing this in memory. And I'll say t.username equals form.username. Then what I'll do is I'll say if user is null or not user check password form.password, then model state add model error password username or password is incorrect return view form and if this did indeed work then we're simply going to do auth dot user equals user which will set the cookies and then we'll redirect so what we want to do is we want to redirect the user back to where he was before he was um, asked to log in so for example, if he tried to access the admin panel and he was redirected to the login form, we want to return him to the admin panel after he successfully logged in. To do that, there's actually a cool little trick. Um, forms authentication adds a return URL parameter to the URL of the login. We can capture that parameter by adding a string return URL. Now this is important that it's named this way because this will pick up on what forms authentication tacks on to our path. So now that we have the return URL, we can simply say if not string is null or white space return URL, return redirect return URL. Otherwise, redirect to action index home. Uh, we'll also want to specify, whenever we do a route to index home, we'll want to specify the area um, as being blank. Because we want the front end area, not the admin area. Okay, so this code is pretty straightforward. We check to see if the form was valid. If it wasn't, we return back the form. We then open a connection to the database. We try to find a user with that username. If we can't find the user, or if the user's password does not match the password hash, then we add an error saying that the username or password is incorrect and we return the form. Then we log in the user by saying auth.user equals user. We check to see if the return URL was um, passed in. If it was, return them to the return URL. Otherwise, redirect them to the home page. So the final thing we need to do is actually create the login view. So I'm going to come up here to views, and I'm going to add a new folder called auth, which corresponds to my controller name. Then I'm going to add a new Razor MVC view with layout, and I'm going to call it login, which corresponds to the action name. The model is auth login, which will actually autocorrect to buzzmmo.web.viewmodels.authlogin. The rest of this page I'll just delete. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to write a basic form that allows the user to log in. So I'm just going to do using HTML.beginForm, I'll do HTML.validation summary to print the errors of validation. And then I'll do a quick refresher on Bootstrap by loading up our create users. And we do form group and form control. Okay, that's easy enough. So we'll do div class equals form group html dot label for username html dot text box for username passing in um, some html attributes the html attribute I want to pass in is class I'll set the class to form control 
Next up, we'll do div class form group with an HTML label for password. And we'll do HTML dot password for password, passing in a new class of form control. Then we'll open up a P and we'll simply say input type equals submit value equals login, passing in a class of button, uh, button primary, button small. So that's our login form. Let's go ahead and hit F6 and see if this works. So jumping back into our page, we refresh, we should still not be logged in, which we aren't. And then I'm going to go directly to auth slash login. And we see our nice little form. I'll type in admin and I'll type in one, two, three, four, and we should get an error. It says username or password is incorrect. So let's go ahead and type in ASTF with the password of admin. We get username or password is incorrect. Let's type in admin admin and see what happens. It logs us in and it says welcome admin. All right, so that's pretty much the process of logging in. Um, the next step is to go ahead and integrate with the ASP.NET rules provider so that we can add uh, authorized attributes to our admin, and then we can fill out our users admin so that we can create users and modify users. And for example, like updating users password or adding them to a particular group like beta testers or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's, those are our next steps, and we'll see you guys in the next video.